give a smile with help. Are you ready for Freddie? Get out there and fill the seats, Freddie. That's what they all said, and off he went to New York, believing that. Are you ready for Freddie? Unknown to him, unknown to any of us, there was a plot of the conspirators to lay in place a way to destroy the company. When the European airlines heard of the McDonnell Douglas rescue bid, they threatened to cancel their orders for planes if it saved Laker. British Caledonian sent a telex warning, no further interest in McDonnell Douglas aircraft. KLM's telex said it was deeply concerned and Belgium Sabina Airlines said the deal would adversely affect their relationship with McDonnell Douglas. Lufthansa's telex said it was not prepared to continue normal business relations with MDC if the deal went ahead. Lufthansa had also pressured the German banks and the Airbus consortium not to reschedule the debts. David Sedgwick of McDonnell Douglas anxiously called Laker in New York. They want you to withdraw the European route application. I said, that's blackmail. They said, probably. I said, well, I'm not going to do it. So Sedgwick said, well, then the, you know, the deal probably won't happen because they're going to keep the pressure on the German banks over the Airbuses the A300s. So I said to him, well, I suppose I can, on the basis it's, it's, it's blackmail anyway, and it's wrong, I can say yes and worry about it afterwards and do something better. He said, oh, no, no, if you, if you say you're going to do it, you've got to do it. I said, okay, I agree. By agreeing to their demands and withdrawing his European plans, Laker was confident he'd saved his airline. On arrival in London, he went directly to the bank to sign the rescue deal. And I'm on my own, sitting in this room. It was the most non-executive looking room I've ever been in. And uh, people started wandering in. And my lawyer came. What are you doing? He said, I don't know. And then this fellow Gillespie, George Gillespie, the manager of the Midland, came in. And he closed the door and stood with his back to the door. And I thought, why is he standing up? And he stood with his back to the door and he said, Good morning, thank you for coming. Uh, we want you to call in the receivers. I said, What? They said, Call in the receivers. I said, What for? Gillespie vanished fairly quickly from the room. Uh, he was in a somewhat nervous state. Um, Freddie and I then went to see Kitching in his room. Dennis Kitching, a chief executive of the Midland Bank, had decided to cancel Laker's informal overdraft arrangement. Kitching said he'd made his decision after receiving a gloomy assessment of Laker's prospects from the CAA while Sir Freddie was in New York. Laker saw Kitching's decision as an act of betrayal. He managed to keep talking until past uh, close of banking at uh, 3.30, and Kitching said, well, it's too late now to uh, stop you trading today, uh, but if there is not uh, an immediate injection of 5 million cash by 9 a.m. tomorrow morning, uh, and a further five million a week later, uh, the overdraft will be called in. Mrs. Thatcher was told of Sir Freddie's crisis on the day she gave 53 million pounds to BA to pay for its redundancies. She considered a cash injection of five million to save Laker. Advising her were Chancellor Geoffrey Howe, Transport Minister Sprout, and Ray Colgate of the CAA. She um, said, uh, you know, I can't bear to think of all my passengers uh, being stranded abroad. My passengers. Uh, my poor passengers. Uh, can't we uh, put in five million pounds and put a ring fence about it so that's the end of the uh, story? I said, well, it wouldn't be the end of the story. It would essentially be an open-ended situation. And... Uh, there would be either the same decision to face again in only two or three months' time. She said, oh dear, an open-ended situation. I couldn't wish that upon my poor taxpayers. Again, her words. Uh, I found this all rather astonishing. But uh, we went round the track, I think, once more. It was pointed out that it was wholly inconsistent to the government to be funding BA redundancies and also funding Laker, who... Uh, 
uh, many would regard as the prime cause of those redundancies. The best suggestion I can give you is really to go home because I couldn't tell you exactly how long you'll be waiting here. Thousands of Lakers passengers were stranded in Britain and America as Sir Freddie's Skytrain was grounded. Most had to fly home on the airlines that had been so keen to see Laker blown out of the sky. Thatcher would not give Laker money, so Transport Minister Sprout turned to the man once dubbed the unacceptable face of capitalism, Lonro's chief executive Tiny Rowland, in a last-ditch attempt to keep Laker in the air. Sprout said to me, why don't you and I, uh, Rowland, why don't we meet, just you and I, and lunch? And, and we did actually lunch at the Lounge Hotel, I think, Lounge Square, just the two of us. And, and um, Ian Sprout said to me, look, you must help me and you must help Freddie because I have, and I remember this so well, I have Freddie Laker's blood on my hands. Lonro quickly agreed to pay off the Midlands £9.2 million pounds, and as the receiver moved...